Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories. Adherence to protocols help health officials detect a new case of COVID-19. Early childhood centers resume full operation pending COVID-19 approval. And employees of the St. Lucia Marketing Board gain valuable training in food safety. On Tuesday, September 8, 2020, St. Lucia recorded a new case of COVID-19. The individual is a 27-year-old male visitor who arrived in St. Lucia on Sunday, September 6, 2020. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says the adherence to the established protocols caused health officials to order the retesting of the visitor. On arrival, he went through the necessary screening and proceeded to a COVID-19 approved accommodation. However, it should be noted that where health authorities have reason to require additional testing in country, this is undertaken as obtained with this traveler. Within our national protocol for visitors and nationals, there is consideration for retesting. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has commenced contact tracing from last night, and this is continued into today to ensure that all contacts are identified and the required interventions will be undertaken to manage the risk of exposure. The Ministry of Health, we are working closely with the hotel's management to ensure that all of the measures are in place to minimize transmission to hotel workers and to guests. We'll provide further information on the progress of this case as our reports come in. Dr. Belmar George reminds the public that the opening of the economy presents the risk of COVID-19 cases. As most sectors open and restrictions are reduced, the public is advised to take personal responsibility to protect themselves, their families and the public in general from exposure to the COVID-19 virus. The public is also advised that protocols are still in place. These include the use of face masks in public and maintaining the recommended six-foot physical distance guidelines. That was Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, along with the manufacturer of real refined coconut oil and magic refined coconut oil, have advised of the withdrawal of certain batches of coconut oil which are non-compliant with the compulsory national standard SLNS 25 2017 specification for coconut oil. This withdrawal affects all re-refined coconut oil which carries the batch number codes BN037, BN039, and BN040, all magic refined coconut oil which carries the codes BN030, BN036, BN037, and BN040, and any product which may have an illegible code. Customers are advised not to consume the affected products bearing the codes. The Coconut Factory Provost Foods is cooperating fully with the Bureau of Standards in resolving all concerns relating to this matter. The company has instructed all outlets which carry the brand to remove the affected batch of oil from their shelves. Distribution of new batches of the oil has ceased until full inspection and certification by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. The company is working with the Bureau to determine the definitive cause of the problem and once the Bureau's assessment process is complete, a full statement will be released to the public on the status of the company's coconut oil. The Department of Education has permitted all early childhood centers to resume their operations pending final approval of their COVID-19 response plans by the Environmental Health Unit. We have a report on that update and others from the Ministry of Education. In acknowledging concerns over the early childhood centers in the COVID-19 environment, Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer has disclosed that all daycares and preschools with applications pending at the Environmental Health Department have been granted provisional permission to reopen. Well, I was pleased yesterday to have received an email where provisional um, approval had been given to many of our schools. Earlier this about two weeks ago, we spoke about the process with environmental health coming in to inspect the schools, to inspect the early childhood centers, noting that the majority of our early childhood centers are private entities. And so even the physical structure, where they, where they are, you know, they, some of them are downstairs a particular home, all of them have structures, you know, they may in a, in a larger building. So all of that have been taken into consideration. 
Dr. Philip Meyer assures that this provisional approval was granted based on the early childhood center plans to mitigate COVID-19 risk. They have actually sent in all of their plans. So all of the ones that have gotten approval, they've sent in their plans and environmental health is constantly going out. We can appreciate that the number of centers that they have, but based on their plans and based on the structures presented, including the hand washing stations, you know, the sanitizing, the ratio of adults to children, they have been given approval to reopen. A couple days into the new school term, Dr. Philip Myers says she has been giving school administrators the opportunity and space to fit into the new routine. I was purposeful in my interaction with educators yesterday and early today because I really wanted a sense of calm. I think and I appreciate that this is a, a new situation for everyone, very different, but I really wanted the positive energy and allowing the educators, the administrators to settle in. I've been in constant contact with the education officers, with some of our principals, and we are keenly aware of what's happening on the ground. I have visited schools, I have not gone in, I have watched them from a distance because I wanted to give them that space to be able to really settle. The reports are good. Much to her satisfaction, rehabilitation work at schools with delayed openings have progressed as scheduled. The Monrepo, Passius Combined, Denry Primary and Larishus Combined schools had delayed openings on Wednesday, September 9th, and the Entrepo Secondary, Moshi Combined and Lesetang Combined schools will reopen on Monday, September 14th. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. Employees of the St. Lucia Marketing Board have gained valuable training in food safety at the close of a hazard analysis critical control point program. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives hosted a closing ceremony for staff of the newly remodeled Pack House at the Marketing Board who completed the hazard analysis critical control points HACCP training. The training that was held for a duration of six weeks is an international standard for food safety which seeks to improve the production of agricultural produce in St. Lucia. The training forms part of a collaborative effort with the Taiwan Technical Mission and ICA and falls under the enhancement of the efficiency of production, distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetables sector project with the overall aim of reducing the food import bill. Adlin Yudovic, project coordinator of the Seven Crops Project, congratulated the staff on a job well done. I'm very pleased by the feedback I have been hearing so far for the, for the, uh, the time of the training. And it's very encouraging. And if you look around, you can see the many posters, which is testament to the different um, knowledge that's been imparted from our facilitator, Mr. Edmund. I encourage you to put everything you learn into practice and to keep on the same energy and the same enthusiasm that you've got during the time of the training. And congratulations to all the graduates on a job very well done. Head of the Taiwan Technical Mission in St. Lucia, Mario Chen, expressed gratitude to the participants of the HACCP training. Chen noted that the initiative is geared towards ensuring that local crops are of the highest quality. We have to make sure that every very step, the full risk is very small, so that here is no risk from e-local crops from the marketing board. The person who will train will monitor this at very step. In addition to this training, the Taiwan Technical Mission has begun to provide the marketing board with the packaging materials that have assist sales to increase. As we all know, this increase go back directly to the farmers as their men for their crops. This training is only the first step in becoming HAPSAP certified. Greg Rawlins, representative of the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, ICA, in the Eastern Caribbean states, explained that ICA will continue to work with the marketing board to improve the standards and quality of produce. We are now seeking to see how we can build upon the very work that's already been done 
and we, we will therefore be working with the St. Lucia Marketing Board. We've already had very constructive discussions with them, and we'll be preparing the standard operating procedures for the Pat House, so that not only would you have been exposed to training that allows you to understand the principles of food safety and handling produce and so on, but you will have standard operating procedures for the Pat House that will guide and ensure that you adhere to the standards that have been established. The Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points, HACCP training, was held on Friday, September 4th, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. The Government of St. Lucia, along with several partners and donor agencies, have launched the Enabling Gender Responsive Disaster Recovery, Climate and Environmental Resilience in the Caribbean Project, more commonly referred to as the Engender Project. We we'll get the details in this report. One of the outputs of the project is the repurposing of U.S. $100,000 to benefit women impacted by COVID-19. During the press launch at the studios of the Government Information Service, Director of Gender Relations, Ms. Janie Joseph, described it as one of the few bright, beautiful moments in this time of much uncertainty and despair brought on by the economic and social impacts of the global COVID pandemic. This, as she said, thank you to the partners and donors. We are here to say thank you and to raise awareness of an initiative that adds to the numerous strides that the government of St. Lucia has made in its COVID-19 response. You will hear how St. Lucia has approached the COVID response under this project, and you will appreciate why gender responsive planning changes outcomes and better enable us to achieve our developmental goal of leaving no one behind. In delivering the opening remarks, Honorable Guy Joseph, Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, reflected on the impact that COVID has had on the economy and unemployment, with women in particular being the most affected. And talking about the unemployment situation brought about by COVID, our women would be the most impacted within that sector because of the number of persons employed in the jobs that are most affected. Let's take the tourism sector as an example with all of our hotels closed. The number of parents, women, single mothers whose only means of income was through the tourism industry, those who have been vendors for all their lives, taking care of their family, all have been impacted. While St. Lucia is focused on a very strong program of construction activity to help mitigate against the full impact of unemployment, we see that the women of this country would be the ones most impacted because they are least involved in the construction sector. And that is why I believe that this program today is one that is very vital. Though it is targeted to a limited number of women in the society, but it is significant. Honorable Gail Rigobert, the Minister of Responsibility for Gender Relations, the department coordinating the process, gave a synopsis of Engender, which through this initiative will see 75 women receive income support, 8,000 masks for frontline workers distributed, and psychological first aid training for 100 frontline workers. Through the government of St. Lucia, the Engender funded COVID-19 response has allocated 100,000 US dollars to support the implementation of income supplemental initiatives, which will benefit women in the informal sector, women farmers, and women living with disabilities. 
Assistance will also be provided to activities that tackle gender-based violence, such as online training in psychological first aid for essential workers, and the procurement and distribution of personal protective equipment to frontline workers who provide aid to women. The Canadian High Commission Barbados representative, Steve Jaltima, had special commendations for the government of St. Lucia. I do want to say uh, a special thanks and, and uh, how grateful I am to see the, the enormous commitment of uh, the government of St. Lucia in having three ministers present as well as, uh, as high level officials and civil society joining um, in person and uh, online that really shows the level of commitment um, and ownership over these activities. And of course, the partnership um, with, with other donors and with uh, the multilateral system and our, our great colleagues in the UN. The process for selection of persons who qualify for assistance was done through the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. Minister the Honourable Leonard Spider Montout indicated that working with a national coordinating team allowed his department to identify eligible persons through agencies such as the Women's Support Shelter, the Family Court, the Welfare Service Unit, the National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities and the network of rural women producers. The government of St. Lucia applauds the Canadian government for their understanding of the increased vulnerability of the small island developing states of the Caribbean, including St. Lucia, to bring practical, tangible benefits for the most vulnerable impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. From the Government Information Service, Rog Varo Lawrence reporting. The OECS Commission and USAID through the Juvenile Justice Reform Project, JJRP, has implemented a capacity building intervention at the Boys Training Center in Cinematography. Dove Productions Limited is the facilitator of the training program. The JJRP Cinematography Intervention will engage 12 boys at the Boys Training Center in various techniques of videography. This is an important step towards the social inclusion of a vulnerable community by way of improving their resilience through skill development. The Juvenile Justice Reform Program has been implemented in the region for over a decade, starting in 2008 with Phase 1 and continuing with Phase 2 in October 2016. JJRP focuses on three components, diversion, rehabilitation, and integration of children in conflict with the law. The project is being implemented in the six OECS independent member states, that is Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. Up next, we have a Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquion. them loose the anxieties the worries open up to possibilities accept the uncertainties and cut them loose the bitterness the hopelessness plant a seed of hope in your mind it will grow and flourish in time Hold on a little longer. Life encourages you to grow. You have so much to offer. Look, tomorrow is waiting to say hello. Don't give up on yourself. Instead, reach out for help. Perhaps it's time to reach out to someone. Call the Health Helpline 203 toll free anytime to speak to a professional. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayal. Monsieur Jesse, Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility, with Formation and Gouvernement de la CGIS, and GIS, et Television National Payer, NTN, Capositor Nouvelle Aquayal. Visitor Primus Hutchinson. Yon jen nom etonjez se ka 27 di malade corona komi touve testé positif. Anon soman sa la fet pa chef officier medical Dr. Sharon Belma George Mekwidi. 
Dr. Belma George déclaré que mardi le 8 juin en mois de septembre 2020, c'est le si registre yon ka neuf de maladie corona. Individu a se yon nom 27 l'année de l'âge qui vive à cette le si dimanche le 6 septembre. Après y débattre, selon Dr. Belma George, il trouvait ces divers traitements qui étaient nécessaires et qu'après ça, il y a entré à quarantaine gouvernement. Mais les autorités de santé qui continuent pour tester des pionniers qui sont nécessaires là où on débattait en pays. Et c'est ça qu'ils ont fait pour éviter ça. En résultat de ça, le ministère de la Santé a commencé pour chercher pour tout le monde qui a éviter ça à tenir contact et puis pour essayer de réduire à ce risque de maladie de corona. Dr. Belma George dit le ministère de la Santé qui travaille pour et puis le management hôtel pays là pour faire assurer que tout est en place pour réduire à ce risque pour maladie à passer si manger. Dr. George dit que le ministère de la Santé a apporté plus d'informations à ce cas là et qui a continué à demander au public là pour obéir à tout protocole pour protection contre la maladie corona. Pour les représentatifs pour les paroles forestiers, Bexon, l'abbaye, Hotsan, la Comengo et l'autre commune, pour l'occasion, vous visitez l'école là qui est en ce là comme saison l'école là ouvert lundi. Le ministre des Affaires et Développement Économique, qui aussi est aussi représentatif pour ces communes là ça c'est honorable. Gaï Joseph, complimenté sur l'école là pour des façons façon de établir pour agir plus maladie corona en manière de protection. Et le représentatif Gaï Joseph dit il te plaît pour des gros travaux que j'ai fait pour protéger les étudiants à cette école ça là. Honorable Joseph, vous remarquez que ce qui fait encore plus plaisir, c'est des gros rangements qui j'ai en place à cette école là. Par exemple, l'école là bien nettoyée, il y a bien petit oué, prévite bien préparé, place pour manger, pour boire de l'eau et l'autre nécessité. Honorable Gaï Joseph fait spéciale référence pour l'école forestière côté Yon Teacher, Yon Instituteur placer un screen entre lui et puis bord là pour ça instruire ses étudiants sans servir un masque parce que il a fait plus facile dit pour sonner ces mots anglais primaire du monde c'est les sons mettre le col méthodiste à forestier madame Alfie Ernest dit que le col latini pour faire un long travail à préparation pour commencer au préparation par exemple placer sin pour les parents suivre les ouvrir vers l'école là il tenait pour nettoyer un pile Facilité pour les étudiants sanitaires, pour nettoyer la main, laver la main, à parmi plusieurs autres. Oui, pour ça, Kai Joseph aussi fait un rappel pour les parents, pour faire effort, pour instruire ces étudiants, pour suivre tous ces protocoles-là. Il conseille pour commencer ces instructions-là à en Kai même, à parmi l'autre école qui est la visiter. Ça veut dire, à part d'ici, l'école a été là, l'autre école est visitée. C'était l'école Tirochet. L'école Bexon, l'ABI, SDA, Hotsan et la Comengo. Le ministre du Développement économique l'a dit aussi, malgré la maladie de Corona porté à l'autre casement, il y a aussi l'occasion pour les gens venir plus avant en manière de adresser diverses situations. Nimo au Japon démarche pour placer sept des secours nationaux à un degré plus haut qu'il était avant. Santé des secours numéro. Ça, c'est santé des secours numéro qui est situé à Bizet, Castui, parce que ça pour adresser tout ce qui est venu de un désastre à pays. En effet, pour faire une organisation plus capable pour opérer à la situation maladie corona, l'organisation de VRP a placé divers équipements, par exemple, computer avec le système des affaires vidéo pour aider à hausser la capacité de l'organisation des assalats à pour fonctionner. Pour ça, là, les officiers qui engagent et puis l'organisation, quand ils s'opposent plus facilement à présent, et puis des gros équipements qui sont en place, et que ça c'est un signe qu'il y a un mauvais désastre à attaquer cette liste. En bas, l'événement COVID, là, travailler avec l'organisation, quand ils s'opposent, par exemple, il y a une place qui est un établissement pour continuer la connexion de communication et pour supporter le travail qui est fait par les officiers qui ont diverses communes. Dans ces équipements vidéo, qu'il fait possible pour faciliter plus forte collaboration entre ces divers groupes et pour ça analyser le travail et ça qui mérite fait du meilleur. Dans ces équipements, qu'il fait possible pour s'apporter information 
pour une grande quantité de monde par sa public. Est-ce que ça nous a trouvé une bonne nouvelle là? Je vais remercier autant pour regarder. Je vais vous une invitation pour que je puisse encore. Si Dieu conserve la vie, je vais vous présenter une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez présenté? Je vais vous présenter Jesse. Merci à Peel Primer. So that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned for more NTN programming.